Hello everyone, this is Santa Sea here, and today we are going to be reviewing the finale of Ruby Volume 4. Wow, that was actually a pretty good review, and there was a lot of moments in there that was really worried something bad was going to happen. But nothing did that bad ever happened. Nobody got killed, nobody got hurt, so that's good. There was that moment where I thought Noah was going to get killed off. Since the Aura's when and Nora's Aura was gone, and I thought it was a funny, cute moment when, um, they were under the same house where Ben actually revealed his semblance to Nora at one point. I thought that was pretty cool. And the entire fight, I was actually surprised they were able to kill the thing, just because of how powerful it was. I don't know, like, how long it's been around, but it could be around for many years, or hundred years or so. But the way of how they defeated it, I thought was interesting, because if they probably didn't do that, they probably would have got screwed over. I think that's only the reason why they were able to defeat it, and then as soon as they defeated it, a bunch of airship, two airships came in at the, like, perfect moment. It's like, eh, plot points, I don't care. <laughs> I'm just gonna put that in there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I was actually, if, now, actually seeing, like, all the characters again at the end of the finale for, like, very small snippets, we still don't know where Yane's going, but we can basically assume she's going to go meet Ruby. <laughs> so, yeah. And I love how at one point in the sign for Kuro Yuri, when Yane was there with Mist, and there was one for Mistral, was Bandit, so it's like, maybe she's going to Raven, maybe she's going to Ruby, and I really couldn't decide. There was two songs, I believe, that were shown in the finale. One was at the end credits to the Arms and Ready, that was a Yang song, and one near where Ruby was writing a letter type thing. I think that was, I honestly couldn't tell what it was, but I'm thinking that was Cold, or another version of it. So, yeah, that was fun. Um, <laughs> all of the Red and Orange Shepherds, I'm going to go crazy with this, because it's kind of confirmed at this point, but we still don't know yet. We don't know if they're actually going to be together together at this point. But I was actually happy that Crow didn't get killed off, when or Nora didn't get killed off. I was happy all of them survived. And now what? We know who the professor at Haven Academy is, and it's Lionheart. A lot of people are presuming he's going to be the Cowardly Lion for the Wizard of Oz. That kind of makes sense at the same point, because now we know Watts is talking to Lionheart. That's not going to be good. I'm getting a feeling as soon as Ranger gets over there, they're going to get betrayed, pretty much. And you can see that being a thing in Volume 5. And the rest of the team is going to have to try to get, bail them out. But, hey, only time will tell in October. <laughs> and this volume, I really enjoyed. I enjoyed it. There were a lot of episodes I really didn't like, especially Chapter 5. I didn't like Menagerie. Like, at first, as I was watching it, I kind of liked it. And then as I realized more and more, I was like, that was a crappy episode. Like, that was not good. Like, at all. Like, I can understand it was more of a rush thing, because we basically had, like, two weeks to prep for that episode. And it was basically near Thanksgiving Day, but I just didn't like the episode that much. I didn't like Menagerie. But, the Volume 4 finale, I think they did an excellent job of closing off the volume. Now, the end credit scene, I immediately like how Crow knew exactly what was going on with Ozpin. Now, does he know that Ozpin um, can do this? I presume he does, because at this point, Ozpin like, asks, like, hey, give me my cane. And he was like, okay, there you go. Um, so that's probably the only reason why Crow had that, was just in case Ozpin's next predecessor came to them. I didn't really like how Oscar came to Crow so fast. Maybe it was due to the train, but at the same point, maybe... What were Ranger doing in the last six to eight months? Is going to Mistral? Well, Oscar just did it like in a flash, like two episodes done. And it, it was weird, but at the same time, I can kind of understand why they didn't do that for Ranger because it would be a short volume. 
but at the same time, it kind of questions it. Now, Wyatt is headed off to the store to go meet with Winter, obviously. Now, I can assume Leo is going to be, like, the head guard at Mistral next to Winter. And at first I thought he was going to be the professor. And I was like, okay, kind of. And then we actually learned that his name was Professor Lionheart. So, Wyatt's um, person that he was going to go meet in Mistral was Lionheart, the professor. Now, is Lionheart unaware of Salem and all of that, and with Team Witch, kind of, yeah. I can see that being the case, that he's unaware. So maybe Crow is going to try to stop Lionheart, but then it's going to be too late. I don't know if Professor Lionheart is going to get killed off, if he knows where the relic is. Well, I presume he does, because he's a freaking headmaster at Haven Academy. Now... Salem's portion was very interesting. We know Cinder is not going to be a good guy at any point in time. Because she is off to go kill Ruby at this point. Like, she wants her dead, pretty much. <laughs> and apparently, Emerald's more of her semblance with illusions can actually create replicas of the person she probably saw. And it can, like, mimic that person's like feelings and everything else. So, which I found that quite interesting as well, like how more powerful can Emerald get at this point in time. Um, I'm hoping we're gonna be more seeing of Taiyane and Zwei in the next volume. I don't think we're probably gonna see them next volume, but I can probably see them coming to the Battle of Haven Academy. Which I presume is going to be happening in Volume 6, as Volume 5 is going to be more of bringing Ruby back together. And I can see at the finale of Volume 5, Ruby is going to get together again. And we're probably going to go slowly off one by one, each team, like each person getting to that person. I can see Blake being the last one to join the group, because she's going to try to take over the White Fane. That's going to be an interesting segment for her story in Volume 5. I'm going to... We're going to see how that turns out. Um, I was actually kind of happy we didn't get to see Adam in this volume, because I think that would be way too soon to see him. I thought we were going to see him in this volume, but at the same time, I really didn't want it. I'm glad they didn't. And I'm glad they didn't kill off anyone in the finale. I was happy with that. I was okay with that. Um... Now, Volume 5, I presume this is going to be coming out October 21st, 2017. Because that's the last two weeks of October. That's basically where Ruby comes back. And, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about Chapter 12. I thought it was a good end. Guys, this is the last review until Volume 5. I'm not going to be reviewing... The Ruby and Shibi episodes, because those are mainly just filler and are not going to be important to the show. I will be reacting to it, but I won't be reviewing that. So, just to get that out of the way, I'm hopefully getting the Meep out this Friday, and I believe the date is for that February 10th. I hope I can get that out. I just need someone's part, and then we'll be all done with it. So, yeah, and guys, we actually made over 200 and 50 plus subscribers. At this minute, what I'm talking is at 270. That's crazy. Thank you for all your support, and I will see you guys in volume 5.